I'm presented on the challenges of cybersecurity and the need for heightened awareness among technical vocational education and training stakeholders in Jamaica. My name is Ainsworth Savage and I'm a, a doctoral candidate at the University of Technology where I'm looking at technology, technology in integration in education. This is the outline of my presentation. We'll look at um, the introduction, background, some key terms to consider, the methodology, the research question, the literature review, the results and discussion of my, um, my, my research, conclusion and references. So recently you would have heard the Prime Minister make an announcement in Parliament that um, he's removing fees for TVET courses, levels one to level four. And you've, what I am um, surmised from that is that there will be an increase in demand for TVET training. And that's a good thing, that's a good thing, because we already know that um, there's research data that indicates that up to 70% of the workforce is not trained for the, for, for the, t the task that they do. So we should have long-term improvement in the country's declining skill, skills gap. We should have an improved cadre of NCT vet qualified um, certified personnel, and we should have enhanced digital transformation, including increased levels of internet pen penetration or internet connectivity beyond the current 78.5%. Um, now the downside of more technology use is an exposure to technology-related risk. The World Economic um, Forum 2023 Global Risk Assessment warned that mixing technology with our everyday life will result in an elevation of risk, global risk. And you're going to find that more and more persons will be taking advantage of this of the situation. And when they take advantage, it is likely to cause disruption. You heard Professor Barry talk about disruption. Disruption can be good, but it can also lead you down the wrong, lead in the wrong way. Critical services like education and training are attractive targets to cyber criminals. Right, who use ransomware to disrupt operational pro processes while they extort money. And in recent time, we have, there have been several incidents of companies having to lock down as a result of the activities of, of cyber criminals. Research data indicate that education and training institutions are leading repositories of significant data Hence, more technology use increases their attractiveness to cyber criminals. Cyber criminals' attractiveness to data is underlined by the fact that data is valuable and it's akin to money, it can be traded. Forrest and Lee believe that it can be traded. However, Maitland has written about and described data as gold, the gold of the digital, the digital society. Now, increased technology use has resulted in cyber criminals becoming smarter and more involved with their various activities. Therefore, TVET stakeholders should ensure that they increase their awareness of the dangers of online activities. They should seek to know about, and these are some of the things that they should, they should know about, digital addiction, addiction. and with our children how addicted they are to these dev devices. The issues relating to online privacy is important. Password protection, the use of multiple factor authentication to secure your, da your data. Cyberbullying, and a lot of children are the subject of, cyber, of, of cyber, cyberbullying. 
digital impersonation, which is really identity theft. Phishing. And phishing is some smart way that they use to get your personal, your personal data. And some of it can be spear phishing, where they target things that you think you, you, you are, it's a part of your everyday setup on the internet, and it looks authentic. But if you really examine, examine what they are after to click on, you will see that it's not necessarily authentic. Um, I know that NCB has been sensitizing their customers about being careful while you navigate the net. And they spoke about smishing, which is really using SMS to, to deceive you. They talk about vising, which is using voice notes to get your, your information and spoofing all sorts of smart ways to get your personal your personal data. We have heard um, in the news persons accounts have been entered into and they have taken taken your money. They have done all sorts of things. And you wonder how do they get this information? These are some of the smart ways that they use to trick you to trick you. Data breaches. We know we know about malware, we know about ransomware, we know about packing the internet. Your, your device so that you, can, you can't use it. It's overloaded. So these are things that, that TV practitioners need to be aware of while we have increased use of technology. For this research, in keeping with the research ethics, I um, obtained permission from the university's ethics committee to, to conduct the research on May 5th. Now, the methodology used is one of descriptive design. And this design it, it, it provides an accurate profile of an, of an event. This design is done experimental, so it's simple to use, and, and provide answers basically to research questions. It also purposely gather, it analyzes, and it provides some sort of interpretation to the data without using any advanced statistical tools, because it's basically just using basic statistics to describe an event. This design is acceptable because the goal is to explore an event from the participant's um, opinion without any reference to the researcher. So it's, primary, it's solely what the participants have to say. It is being used because it will serve to describe the issues, including the impact on TV from stakeholders' views. The delimitation of this um, research is that while efforts were made to include more than one institution, we, I did not achieve that, um, that result because of the short time span within which I, I, I had to work. I had to work. The short window between the time of receiving ethical clearance and really following up in the data collection did not provide me to get sufficient information from a number of institutions as I originally wanted to do. So three research questions guided my, my research. The first one, to what extent are stakeholders been made aware of the cyber crime and cyber security issues in a TV environment. Secondly, how resilient will stakeholders be in situations of cyber security in TV in Jamaica? And thirdly, what strategies should stakeholders consider to manage the threat of cyber security? Now, the literature provides um, some sort of context within which the research was done. So we know that this, the internet is definitely not a safe space to operate. There are cyber attacks rising. We have um, the government enacting laws to protect us while we navigate the space. So cyber security is really the, the detection, protection, and response to any kind of operational threats. Cyber security includes what? Restricting unauthorized access or the change of deleting or destroying and editing of electronic data. The distinction between cybersecurity and cybercrime really lies in the definition. And we you know cybercrime is the activities of individual hackers 
or groups who carry out cyber attacks, usually for personal and financial gains. This um, emphasis on skills training is likely to result in a more hybrid way of providing instruction, right? And with that, it means that there's more use of, te of, of technology. Consequently, Nazir comment is important because he believes that moving to hybrid delivery will potentially affect efficiency and is likely to, to create challenges, learning challenges, which also impact our, our cybersecurity is also going to exacerbate. So some of the impacts that we know of um, cybersecurity is, issues include Price Waterhouse Coopers has, has noted that one in four companies globally has suffered some form of a data breach, which cost them between one and $20 million. The, in the Caribbean and Latin America, there has been more than 500,000 attempted cyber attacks. It is recommended that organizations should embark on frequent backups because some organizations are four times likely to be attacked or to suffer some sort of cyber in incident. And the cost of recovery has increased from 50,000 US dollars to over $250,000 in 2020. It takes approximately 277 days, that's nearly a year, to recover from a cyber, from a cyber attack. And the recovery period, it depends on how sophisticated your setup is. It can be more than, more than the 277 days. So while physical security provides one aspect of protection, it is not sufficient. And stakeholders need to recognize that acquisition of modern technologies will not provide the, be the necessarily the best protection. There is need for increased awareness among stakeholders and an adherence to strict compliance with relevant legislation. We heard about the Data Protection Act, which will, will become effective in December of this year. And there's also the, cyber, the Jamaica Cybercrime Act, which has been is in Parliament for discussion and is to be amended. The TV environment urgently needs to be reimagined to counter cyber security, according to Professor Thorpe, who believes that the onset of AIs, self-learning options, and generative technology, such as chat GPT, has changed, will change the world dynamics of how, we, of how we operate. Cyber security breaches and cyber crimes are inevitable, and its organization's resilience becomes an important concern. Professor Anna Fuller developed a resilience profile of teachers in order to address or to assess what we do in order to prepare, better prepare our, ourselves. And I use some of that to guide this research. So in terms of resilience, what are we talking about? And this is the definition that I use in this, in this research. It is how a system plan and prepares to withstand and absorb recovers from and adapts to various disruption and threats. Some general um, findings from the survey that I did was that 81% of the respondents were male. The average age was about 35.5 years. 82% of the respondents had, had um, tertiary level education. 54% of them listed their vocation as instructor and lecturer. 15% were IT specialists. 23% were, were trainees and 8% were other. So the, some of the findings include 
their personal knowledge, 82 percent had um, significant knowledge about about um, cyber security and cyber crime. Of that 82, 27 percent had full knowledge. However, 18 percent had little or no knowledge. In answer to the research question, to what extent have stakeholders been made aware of cybercrime and cybersecurity issues in the Tibet environment? There was a split, 50-50. 50% of the respondents indicated that they, they were, in, were both involved and not involved in discussion about the issues of, of um, cybersecurity and cybercrime at the strategic level of their organization. However, 81% indicated that their awareness was increasing because of independent reading and other interaction on the issue. How resilient will stakeholders be in the situation of a cyber security or cyber, cyber security breach or cyber crime in, a, in Tibet in Jamaica? There's a 58 perception measure among respondents about, the, about their institution preparedness to deal with incidents of cybersecurity and cybercrime. However, only 45% of respondents believe that their institution would significantly recover from an incident of cybersecurity breach or cybercrime. While that may be on the low side, overall 73% believe that their institution would recover nonetheless. However, there was an overwhelming 85% who support, supported the factors selected from Unifold's um, profile framework of resilient characteristics among respondents. Hence, their organization would be deemed resilient. What are some strategies that they have suggested that stakeholders should consider to manage the issue of cyber security in Jamaica. And these are sort of responses that I have put together. Establish effective data management initiative and implement a system of layered network with restrictions. Increase public and security awareness while restricting the use of bring your own device to the organization, even as the organization manages the internal threat especially the human element. Because part of the environment of our, the ecosystem of technology is that the human, we play a major part. It doesn't matter how sophisticated the setup, the technology is. If we leave, if we don't follow a certain protocol and we leave our computers open, other persons can go and, and, and do what they want to do and therefore breach the, breach the system. So. Another recommendation was establish regional partnership, including collaboration among tertiary institutions. Sorry. We to constantly upgrade the IT infrastructure while seeking opportunities to increase offsite backups to facilitate data recovery and minimize storage of data and online servers while we seek to make greater use of cloud, cloud storage or cloud computing. And also to improve the legislative framework to better support cybersecurity and cybercrime initiatives. So in concluding, the research findings provide a snapshot of what obtains at one main institution. 85% Positive per perceived measures of resilience were demonstrated at this particular institution. It, however, indicates the importance of the human element despite the 50-50 split among, among respond respondents. What am I recommending? It cannot, this research findings cannot be generalized or does not reflect all the Tibet institutions. So there's a need for further studies to unearth a more in-depth analysis and provide more information. These are some references. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for 
hearing me out this afternoon. It's been 